I followed my dreams and opened an antique store to have adventures and spend time as a family. Sometimes you have to climb a mountain and open some new doors to find the treasures inside. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Okay, so I just pulled into my shop. I've got to unload, found all kinds of cool stuff. Let me uh, do a little unboxing inside and show you what I got. So lights are on at the shop. I've got uh, about 20 minutes before I have to open. It's been a busy morning already. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go grab some boxes and some stuff out of the back of the vehicle and show you what we got. So a fair bit of stuff this morning. Let's go through the boxes, which I haven't even really gone through yet, and see what there is. So all kinds of neat stuff. It's gonna take me a couple minutes to go through it all, but let's uh, start going through boxes and see what we have. So there's a stack of paperwork here, and the reason I picked it up is that it's mostly boxing related. Um, so this is from the Optimist Olympic Club in 1962, kind of a neat local piece. But there were some other interesting things in here as well. Let's see, old newspaper. There's probably a reason why they kept it, but probably been packed up for a long time. Look at these old boxing posters. This is, yeah, 1955 or six, somewhere around there. And there's a few of them, a couple uh, harder paper ones and um, some other ones as well. So a lot of times local uh, historic pieces like this, um, somebody who's into uh, boxing would think it's cool, but also somebody who's into local history might think it's neat too. So look at the prices, 50 cents for kids to get in and a dollar for adults. That seems fair for a show. So there's all kinds of neat stuff. Just great graphics, great looking things. And um, yeah, I'll have to look up and see when this is from. I'm guessing it's from about 1955 because the last date's on here are from 1954. So a whole bunch of cool boxing posters. Those were neat. So got those this morning. And this was a neat item too. It's monogrammed. You probably know, if you're into antiques, you probably know already what this is. Uh, if you don't, I'll open it up and you'll have a really good idea. It's a hat box. But what's cool about it is it's um, a really nice leather hat box and it still has the uh, beaver pelt top hat inside of it. Now let's see, this was Scott and Company, Hatters to the King and Royal Family. So probably a really nice quality hat and it came in such a nice box, it's not surprising. Um, this is really what started Canada was the beaver pelt and, and uh, beaver top hats like this. This is why they came here, for the beaver pelts, and then uh, now here we all are. In the 1800s, most of Canada was Rupert's Land, which was privately owned by the Hudson's Bay Company. In fact, Edmonton, Alberta, where I live, was founded as a trading post for the fur trade. Hudson's Bay still exists today as a department store and is one of Canada's oldest retailers, in fact, one of the oldest in North America, opened since 1670. So a really nice early fur trade piece. And I bet you could trace back and see uh, I'm guessing it was a Scottish name, Mick, maybe McLeod, or maybe who knows. So, uh, very, very neat item. So that was in, in with a lot too. There was also this, an old seltzer bottle. And um, this is a really early one. It's 1926. It's uh, English made. It's marked right on it. But uh, this would be a really early caged uh, seltzer bottle. A lot of the earlier ones, well, let me show you. I've got some of my showcase over here. A lot of the earlier ones were uh, just solid glass and uh, they had a tendency to uh, be a little explodey. So um, they were less popular and they were taken over by this. So I've got some of my showcase there. And now I've got an extra one here. So this is the uh, the transition, the, the one that goes from the glass um, straight over to the uh, wire mesh surrounding it. So very, very early bottle and a nice piece of uh, bartending history. And you might look at these and kind of wonder what they are. You can see it's got the uh, Royal Coat of Arms on it. These, and there's two of them I believe here. Yeah, there's two. Are what they call fire buckets. Uh, cool, cool items, early, early pieces. And uh, they are leather handled. 
But stuff like this is a nice uh, item to have sitting on a shelf or to decorate with. So uh, I picked them up more as a home decor sort of piece, but really, really cool piece of history. And this looks like a plastic bag full of tins. So we're gonna take some of these out and uh, see what we have in here. Feels like this one's still full of cloves. Some early, early tins. And uh, people collect these to decorate the tops of their kitchens. Maybe they have a little shelf up top where they put this stuff. That's kind of neat. So there's a lot of collectors of tins. Really, people just love them for the advertising. They love it for, um, for, for decorating with. So I've got a few of the same thing. There's quite a bit of margarine there. I don't know if this stuff goes bad. I imagine it probably would after a while, even though it's dried, it can't be that great. Surprisingly, it smells good. Probably because it's just spices. So yeah, nice little assortment of vintage spice tins. Nice for a collector. Let's move on to box number two and see what's in there. And I can tell that this is an early flag because of its material. It's cotton, it's not nylon. Um, it's got earlier style stitching on it. So I'm guessing this is a, an older flag. And of course, Canada used to fly the Union Jack as our flag being a colony of the British Empire, well before we flew the Red Ensign and um, flew the Canadian flag, which is the maple leaf, but a very, very neat piece. And at the bottom of the box were some really early comic books, most of them 12 and 15 cent issues, so I'm gonna have to go through these and see if there's any that stand out or might be worth a little bit more. Sometimes if it's a first appearance of a character or a number one issue, they can be worth a bit of money. So it's time for me to check these issues out and see if I've managed to score a gem. And this was a super unusual piece. This is a 1800s Masonic cap. Um, definitely in the military style. You can kind of think uh, Napoleonic era. Um, neat piece in really great shape too. And it looks like it might actually fit me. Well, it's cool, but I don't really think it's my style. Uh, plus there's probably all sorts of uh, rituals and rites and passages and rings I need to buy and stuff to be part of that club. So. Uh, it's going to go on the shelf as a cool decorative thing that maybe somebody uh, who is a mason might think is really cool. Interesting piece of history though, for sure. Now to go through some of the cans and bottles I got. Um, not all of these are going to be collectible, but there are people who do um, buy vintage oil cans. I mean, this is kind of my wall of oil cans and stuff going on over here. Plus, I do carry a pretty wide range of this stuff. so. There's always somebody looking for a cool old oil can and I'm uh, always trying to find more. So anytime I see a garage with a box full of oil cans and things, I definitely pick it up because you never know when there's going to be a good one in there. And if you have somebody who's into boxing, this is a neat piece. This is an early rosin can, still full. I actually got a few of them, but this would have been used in the gyms uh, to powder your shoes or powder your feet when you were in the ring so you could move around. Um, Definitely kind of a neat item and not something that you see every day. Uh, this fellow was into boxing, which is why I got all the boxing posters too. So there's lots of other bottles of things. Don't really know what some of them are. That one says glycerin on it. Uh, that would have been um, automotive or glass cleaner, Peerless. There's a couple of those. Those are neat bottles you don't see every day. That one's still full of oil and a uh, really neat can that uh, we got in the shop here. So that's a nice piece. It's going to go out on the shelf and look great. Old uh, auto waxes, containers full of stuff. So it's, this one, uh, <laughs> this is kind of unusual. This is uh, put out by Firestone and it's so you could paint um, white walls on your car. I guess if you wanted fancy wide white walls and didn't have the money, you could actually just use this. So it creates white sidewalls on black tires, renews discolored side white walls. And it's actually still full. Uh, a lot of this stuff is still full, which is probably why they kept it liquid porcelain so yeah a few little odds and ends in here so i'm gonna go through and see if there's any other uh cool cans it's kind of a nice early uh varnished tin that's a neat one too actually it's a original volkswagen i'd say this has got to be right out of the 50s um it's that sort of putty red that you see on the cars and of course it's uh all in german yeah this has got to be right out of the 50s and it doesn't feel like it's liquid in there anymore. <laughs> it's definitely solidified. But that would have been a nice little touch-up can for somebody who is touching up little scrapes and nicks on their Volkswagen. But still, really, really cool piece. Um, it'd be nice if I could get some of that red paint off. But either way, it's still super duper neat. And I haven't seen one of those before. 
silk screen paint with that great logo on it, cover the earth. That would be a big sticky mess, Sherwin Williams, if we covered the earth in paint. I know that's your slogan, car polished in, so lots of neat stuff. Um, I pr probably should talk about this guy too. This was sitting in the basement, um, definitely an early sort of little serving tray piece, hand painted, most likely hand carved. And it's about uh, two, three feet tall, so. And yeah, anytime that I come across old cool tins, that's an old one, Imperial Oil. Old tins like this with great graphics, I always pick them up. There's always gonna be somebody looking for a nice old uh, motor oil can or things like that. This is uh, a box with some really early Asian uh, marionette dolls. And they're just beautifully done with lovely little silk outfits. Um, they've got pants, the whole thing. So let's have a look and uh, take one out of the box to have a better look. Just beautifully put together and hand painted with little wire glasses and the whole works. Um, in terms of age, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research on this guy to see what it's from, but this would have been like a little uh, a little doll. Um, I don't know if it would have been marionette because I don't see any attachment points to the hands. It's probably just a little doll, but just the cutest little thing. And there's two of them in there. Actually, there's three, there's a smaller one too. So we're gonna uh, take those out and I'll have to do a little bit more research on these guys to figure out the age, but I'm guessing uh, they're quite early as that feels like it's uh, bisque, very, Early Asian doll. Cool to find, you'd never expect it to find in Canada. And this was an interesting piece too. This is from 1927. Um, it's a commemorative plaque that would have hung uh, in official buildings, uh, like post offices, federal buildings, schoolhouses and that, uh, to um, commemorate the Confederation of Canada in 1867. So uh, it's a nice embossed copper plate, a nicely framed in the original frame, and a nice piece of local and Canadian history to add to the store. So this will look good hanging up on the wall in here. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic piece to have up on the shelf. And if you are at all in the least tiniest bit way interested in old pocket watches, what I'm going to show you next is going to probably drive you crazy because it's a super cool find. So first off, you can see it's a, it's a lot, a, a bunch of pocket watches, which is cool in itself. But I want to point out the case that it's in is actually an old store display uh, for pocket watches. It actually has all the original hooks and the felt lining. So I mean, to get an original store display like that, well, that's gonna be a cool thing to have in the shop. But uh, let's have a look-see. There's all kinds of stuff in here from what I believe are uh, early silver snuff boxes. Um, there's tons and tons of old pocket watches. Uh, those look like uh, perhaps tie clips. Tons of neat stuff. So. What I'm gonna have to do is go through all these watches and see which ones are running. Uh, some are quite early. You can tell the early ones are key wind, like that, that's the key. And I was lucky enough that I think I've got almost all the keys I need for my watches right here in this little box. So it's gonna be a matter of going through, seeing what I have, seeing which ones of these work and which don't, and uh, looking at whether I wanna invest the time or the money to uh, repair some of them or whether I wanted to uh, just sell them as is. But I can tell looking at them already, some are uh, what they call a hunter case, which is uh, covered back and front. Some are fusé. You can tell from the thickness, this would be uh, like a chain drive fusé. So this is probably like 1850s or 60s. So there's a lot of really cool and interesting watches in here. And uh, to think I got it in this awesome case too, this is gonna be a fun afternoon for me going through this stuff. And this was another really interesting piece that I picked up today. This is a cuttered line shipping poster. So this is depicting the Franconia, which was built in 1922. It mainly ran between London, uh, specifically Liverpool and uh, New York City. And um, it did serve time during the war as most of the great ships did. It served as a troop ship during World War II and was decommissioned in the 1950s. So something like this would have been in a, like a travel office or the cuttered line offices that they had. So when you booked your trip across the sea, you'd see the ship and think that's the one for you, that one looks the most luxurious. And of course, as you know, the Titanic was one of those great ocean liners as well. This wouldn't have been quite as big as it's a single stack uh, ship. So uh, the more stacks, the bigger the ship, the more engines. So um, this would have been a nice little ride across the ocean, I'm sure. Um, but a really cool piece, um, really interesting item, and I'm glad that I have it in the shop. I love these old shipping posters, and it's specifically, and it's really nice to get it with the original frame. You can tell this is the frame that this would have come in. Uh, it's advertised as going to Europe, so this probably came out of New York where they're going the other direction. Um, the only thing I really have to get for is glass because right now it's missing the glass. But 
Cool piece, wouldn't you say? So a lot of really interesting stuff today, and a lot of times I go through a house and I try and find what I, I think is going to really match the store and match what I have going on here. So some cool things in today. Um, definitely excited about going through those pocket watches. That's going to be a lot of fun, uh, seeing which ones work and polishing and cleaning. So uh, it's one of the perks of the job when you love antiques is uh, spending some time with them before they find a new home. Um, I sure hope you like these videos. If you do, make sure to hit that subscribe button, which is up there somewhere. You can also like us on uh, Facebook and Instagram as well. Our website too at www.curiosityedmonton.ca and hope to hear from you guys soon. Have a fantastic day and stay tuned for more. Bye for now.